Welcome back! This is the third part in my series on building a CNC router. While we did the mechanics and electronics in the last two parts, in this part we can finally start to machine something. This is what I'm going to be making today. It's a simple bowl, not really something special. However, it was designed with parameters to easily change it. For example, I can change the length to 80mm and boom, it will update to reflect the changes. So you can easily adapt it to your needs. I won't explain how exactly I created the G-code because to be honest I don't understand it well enough but I might incorporate that into a future video so subscribe for that. I also didn't do any tuning at all so there's probably some room for improvements. Now I can't export and upload the G-code just yet because I still need to add a waste board. When you're machining a part that requires you to cut all the way through the material you're also cutting it to whatever is underneath it. Ideally the waste board would be something like MDF but I didn't have anything like that on hand. You don't necessarily need a separate waste board since the base plate is already made of wood but as I said in the last part I really don't want to use it like that and I wouldn't recommend it either. In order to still be able to screw things tight I use these threaded inserts. These inserts will screw directly into the base plate. In order to have all these inserts in a null position I use the seam router itself to pre-drill all the holes. The intention was to have a 6x6 grid of inserts but because I can count it ended up being a 7x7 grid. Due to the design of this machine the end mill could not quite reach the base plate, so I had to lower the spindle a bit. Knowing the exact location of each insert, I wanted to use the machine to mark the four mounting holes. However, I unintentionally overstepped the machine's limit. I was actually pretty lucky as only three to four balls fell out. I was able to fix it, but trust me, you don't want to make the same mistake. It took me almost an hour to fix it. Now I can finally upload the G-code and move the machine. I started with the dry one just to make sure it was behaving as expected. As a material I used this piece of wood which I also used in the last part for calibrations. After another little dry run, I added the end mill, which is also the same as in the last video. But now I just hand tightened it, which will work fine, there's no way this will cause any problems. As it turns out, the end mill moved down a bit, causing the machine to make a deeper cut than intended. Apparently it's a good idea to screw things tight, who would have thought? So I review the machine for the second time and give the go.
With that, the part is complete. I have to say I'm very satisfied with the results. There are some minor flaws, but the first machine part, this is not bad. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss my next video. Until next time.